So uh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to yet another uh, OTAN uh, webinar. Uh, the topic today, let me go ahead and get to the next one, uh, is using Remind to safely communicate with students. Now, of course, you can also use it to unsafely communicate with students, but that wouldn't be very wise. Um, and so uh, Remind uh, is a third party app, which uh, appears to uh, be okay for use with uh, students uh, in K-12 districts uh, throughout the country and also with uh, adult students. And in a nutshell, the reason is uh, communications from the teacher uh, two student phones are through this third party service. And so your own personal phone number uh, is not viewed by, uh, by the students. And, uh, you know, in our, in our district, uh, we have uh, restrictions against the, that type of uh, communication. Uh, and I'm sure many districts do. Uh, so this provides a way to um, use the ubiquitous cell phone and texting uh, apps uh, to speak with students. And I think uh, people are beginning to realize, and I'm sure there's a lot of uh, statistics out there which show, uh, and probably anecdotally you can uh, verify this or not, but people respond to text messages faster uh, than virtually any other type of communication uh, outside of getting hit over the head with a baseball bat. Um, and so you get a text message and maybe you don't actually answer, but you certainly look at your phone very quickly to see uh, who is texting you. And so um, the way this, the, another reason why this became uh, especially important for us uh, at the LA Unis USD is that uh, we had done a pretty good job and uh, when students enroll in our classes, uh, pretty much everybody provides a, um, a phone number. Not everybody provides, in fact, very few people uh, provide a uh, email address. And um, even though we were in the process of rolling out uh, a division uh, email addresses to our adult students, uh, we have not finished that process. So in fact, uh, in the, we were in the middle of doing that uh, when the schools were closed. So the, uh, the best uh, method most people have uh, for reaching students, especially during this time, is through uh, cell phones. And so uh, what this does is it not only allows you to uh, make that first contact, but it also allows you to make uh, additional contacts and provide, actually provide instruction through uh, texting and text messages. So that's what we're gonna talk about uh, today. Uh, so the goal uh, for this webinar is that you will be able to contact uh, your adult education students using Remind and demonstrate a facility with the uh, basic features of the uh, application. So that's, that's the basic goal. Uh, go to uh, remind.com uh, and actually sign up for a, uh, uh, an account uh, and then start to use it uh, to work with. So go ahead, I'm gonna uh, presume that you've done that and that you're looking at something that looks like this, the Remind homepage, a very, very beautiful uh, school somewhere in the world and uh, you've clicked on sign up. So uh, after having done that, and um, you'll get these options, uh, you can create an account from scratch, either by uh, entering an email or a phone number, or if you already have a, a Google account, you can use your existing Google account uh, to sign up as well. And uh, as you notice by signing up, you do agree to their terms of service and privacy policy. All right, now what's gonna happen is uh, if you 
use an email to sign up. They're going to send you a four digit code. Uh, if you use the phone number to sign up, they're going to text you that four digit code and uh, they're requesting that you confirm your account uh, by entering that four digit code. Um, there's a question in the chat that I just happened to, to see, which says, is it okay to use work email? Uh, you know, this is the type of thing, uh, you know, that uh, there could be different uh, responses. Uh, remind, it doesn't matter to remind uh, which uh, email you use. Um, it may matter to your work, uh, but if you're going to use this, uh, you know, for work, which I presume you will be, uh, there should be no reason why you can't use it uh, for your work email uh, or use your work email for this, for this purpose. Um, sometimes I'm careful about uh, what I sign up for using a work email uh, because in our district, when you retire, it's like they cut off your email like before you uh, leave the office, you know, after the, turning off, you know, after turning in your paper. So uh, there, there may be some things that, you know, you want to keep using. You may decide uh, if that applies in your district, uh, you know, not to use a work email uh, because you may lose access to it as, you know, when they separate you from employment. Okay, so hopefully you've done that. Uh, and uh, if you signed up with a phone number, there may be an extra step in that uh, because you signed up with a phone number, they also want you to you know, tell them what email address uh, you'll be using. So you, you, may get, um, you may get a secondary uh, step there if you signed up with a phone number. Um, and uh, Jorge asks if there's a difference between signing up with your phone number or email and I cannot really answer that, but I don't think uh, that I don't think they would say, say see that as a difference. Uh, you know, to them it's probably all the same. Let's see how is this app different from and or better than creating a Google Voice phone number and using that to communicate with students. I don't actually know the answer to that. I don't know what the uh, privacy concerns are. Uh, as related to uh, Google Voice and phone. I do know that um, Remind integrates well with some other common programs. Uh, I'm not sure how Google Voice does. Uh, I think I'm going to leave that as something for those of you who are experts uh, in using Google Voice uh, to experiment with. Um, and the other one, uh, what can you tell us about their terms of service? Uh, does the app have access to a phone's contacts, uh, calendar, et cetera? Um, so that is an interesting question. Again, I'm not uh, completely familiar with all the ramifications of that. There is an app. Uh, students do not need the app. You may want the app uh, so that you can respond and create and send messages uh, as the the teacher of a class or classes, uh, but students don't need it. Um, I imagine that they'll want something. For example, if you like to, uh, you know, send a photo of something to your uh, teacher, uh, to your students, then it would ask you for access to your photos. Oh, and there's one more question. When I try to reset my password, I never get the email to reset it. Uh, a common suggestion is check your spam folder. Uh, sometimes emails like that uh, get bumped to a spam uh, mailbox. Okay, so let's see. So again, uh, my information is that they're gonna send you a four digit code, but if you get a different number, go ahead and enter that. Uh, after you do that and you have perhaps they ask for your email address if you didn't sign up. Uh, they do want you to enter your name and uh, create uh, a password. Okay, uh, so hopefully uh, you have done that as well. 
and then there's a, a user agreement which uh, they uh, you know require you to accept uh, if you decline it I imagine that uh, you won't be able to use remind and then they ask you tell us about yourself see so if you said I'm a teacher at that screen I don't think it would ask you to uh, sign up again as a teacher. But again, this is the way it looks like uh, on a desktop. This process may look different if you're doing it on uh, a cell phone. The very, very first time that you do sign up, if, if that's what you're doing, it's going to go right ahead and ask you to uh, create a class. If you already have a, an account and you're just uh, logging in again, it, it won't ask you that. It would just go to your, your home page. But um, so this is where you get a chance to actually give a title to a class that you're teaching. Obviously, you want to, you know, try to make it as clear as you can. Uh, I like to, you know, put, put if it, uh, the time of the class as well as the title. And you can also include your name to make it um, really, really uh, clear. Okay. So in any case, uh, notice they do have uh, the, I think it's the SEPA rules. I'm not sure if I'm quoting the right acronym, but it, you know about people under 13. You know, it is okay, but then they get the parents' email involved. Okay, so this is sometimes the issue for some people. Um, they want to identify a school, and I think they've done a pretty good job of, uh, you know, listing huge numbers of schools, uh, but I think what they do is they just try to match you up with an existing school here. So uh, you may try al alternative names for your school or for your district, uh, but I do think that uh, there's all, if they actually don't find your school, then there's also an option to um, say this, I don't see my school. Uh, and then of course, at the very bottom there, it also says, I don't work at a school. So that could also be a legitimate option. So we've got a few more slides to go for the, the sign up process. So you can see I work at a, a school called North Valley Occupational Center. Uh, there was, there's also in our division a West Valley Occupational Center. So that, you know, when I was adding the school, uh, it popped up in, in that fashion. Um, most of us know our school by the uh, initials and I, I did that the first time and it, it didn't recognize us but when I started typing out the name it did find us so uh, you want to go ahead and and do that okay and finally when you select the school uh, you click on save and if you've done that correctly then right away uh, you go to uh, that page of your brand new class uh, and it will say uh, add people. So let me uh, speak to this a, a, a little bit. There are different ways to add uh, people uh, into your brand new class. And uh, notice uh, that one of the first things it mentions, it says uh, enter contacts or copy and paste from a spreadsheet. And I noticed in the comments, some of you did try to copy and paste from Excel, but it didn't quite work out. Uh, and so um, you may have to experiment with uh, comma separated values, uh, sheets, and find out where the comma will go to make it uh, if you're copying and pasting. So you may want to try to do that uh, a few times. I think if you have the name, whether or not you do it last name, first name, or first name, last name, and then uh, in a separate column, the phone number. Uh, you, if you, uh, I think if it's, if you use a CSV separated value, CSV file, it automatic, if they're the, the name and the, uh, you want the name, first name, last name in one column, and then the phone number in a second column, and it automatically interprets that as being a comma between the two fields, and it should paste um, correctly. 
So we had at our division, we had to experiment with that a little bit because of out of our student information system, uh, teachers can download a spreadsheet, but we did have to experiment with uh, manipulating that spreadsheet in a way that it, a remind would recognize it. But it is doable. Uh, if you uh, have a list, I think if you just do the student name and then a comma and then the email, uh, that would work as well. But you can also uh, click on an individual row and manually enter uh, student emails or phone numbers. So um, in the, um, that's one way. And if you notice on the left side, uh, that this page is called phone or email contacts. Now, let's say that you have um, entered the five or 10 or 15 names. What will happen as soon as you click on add people at the bottom of this page, a, um, a text message or email is actually sent to all of those people. And um, they have auto, and, and you, you may be surprised or you may not be, but even while you're doing that, you may start to get responses. And that's actually what happened uh, when I was coaching a, uh, an instructor through that process. Before we had even moved off of this page, uh, he had started to get responses from students who had received his text message. So that was pretty cool. Um, but I'm, I'm going to, uh, before we move on to the, the website live, I wanna talk about the other ways to add people to a course. So if you look on the left side, uh, it says, the next slide says printable PDFs. Okay, so this is something that you could do if you're back in a classroom situation uh, and you have all of your class sitting there with their phones uh, handy. You could actually print this out or, um, you know, project it up on the, the screen perhaps, but just print this out and have it. So the way I would use this is, um, you know, after I, an initial, you know, uh, attempt to get as many students in the class signed up on one day, then I would have several of these for students who were absent. Uh, and I, I had trained uh, other students to help the newer students uh, go through this process so that anytime I got a new student, there was, you know, they have this, this page of rules or instructions and then they could use that. So uh, that's, you know, save that uh, for, you know, sometime in the future uh, if and when we return uh, to, to classrooms. So uh, this next one says in-person uh, instructions, okay? And uh, this would actually be better uh, if you are trying to uh, do it in front of the class with the projector, it's, it's uh, much simpler, okay? Uh, and so what I thought we would actually do, uh, you could try this uh, right now to see how well this works. This is a, an, an experiment. I haven't actually done this uh, in a live webinar yet, so I'm hoping it will work well. This is uh, an actual class that I set up for uh, you know, doing trainings. And uh, the code for this class is at easy code for you. And when we get to the point about settings, um, I will show you how to change the uh, computer generated or the remind generated code to an easy code that may be easier for your students. So the name of this class you see up in the upper left is called Practice with Remind, and the code for is easy code for you. And so what the student or what you are to do, if you so desire for the purpose of this webinar, is you're going to text the, the text message at easy code for you to a number 81010. So getting out your cell phone, if you want to participate, um,
go to your text message program, and in the to field, you type the number 81010, uh, and then as the body of the message, you type at easy code for you. What's happening now is that on my own cell phone, I am uh, receiving text messages from Remind uh, from many, many people, or let's say several people at this point, who are uh, joining the class. So that's a good thing. Okay, so again, go ahead, continue to uh, join the class uh, using this method. Uh, do note, uh, and this was something that I did find, some cell phones could not make use of this short code, 81010. And I don't, I don't know if it's, that was probably more the, the, um, the cell phone provider than the actual cell phone but some providers did not like this shortcut method. So in that case, uh, you can see the actual phone number, the 916-303-2724 phone number, uh, and it does the same thing. And phones seem to like that better than uh, some phone or some providers seem to like that better than the short five digit uh, code. While you continue to um, sign up, and thank you for doing that, it will make some of the demonstrations later also more relevant because uh, we can actually send messages and things to, to people who are actually in this class. Okay, so uh, the next one, uh, the last way uh, to share information uh, is to share a link. So on the left side, if you click on the share a link uh, menu item, what you actually see is a link that can be copied and then dropped into an email, if you have an email, uh, or posted on a website or a web page uh, that people can then use that link uh, to join. Before we go live, let me take a step back. Uh, and talk about some of the account settings that uh, you may find uh, useful. Uh, and you find this menu uh, to the upper left uh, of the screen under your uh, name. You click on the down arrow and you'll see the menu account settings. So uh, as part of the menu, uh, the one that you know stands out right away, uh, notification preferences. Okay, so on this screen, you have the opportunity uh, to decide, uh, you know, which actual email you're going to use or which actual phone number, and whether or not you want to enable. Uh, notifications, you know, like on your desktop computer or not, uh, or you can add other devices. So this may be uh, something it does mention. Uh, there's a convenient button there about to tell you about uh, downloading the uh, mobile app if you uh, want to go uh, that, that path or not. Uh, I have highlighted here at the very bottom, uh, turn on office hours. Uh, that may be nice. Uh, what it does is it um, allows you to uh, sort of set office hours when you're going to get messages. Uh, and uh, but notice that uh, even though um, they'll get like a warning message, they they can still send the message. So it will say, you know what, you know, are you really sure you want to send? this message to your teacher, you know, at 5 a.m. Um, so it does give them the option. Yeah, I, I do want to send this message to my teacher at 5 a.m. But I think what they're saying there is uh, you're not obligated to answer it at 5 a.m. Uh, and then right above that, the other thing that uh, you may want to think about is uh, do you want to allow replies to your messages? You can make this a one-way system where you're just pushing out 
uh, the messages and the information and not bother with uh, replies. Um, you know, so you can decide whether or not uh, that would be something that um, you'd want to do. Okay, so at this point, what I was going to do was go directly to uh, my Remind uh, website. So this is my account and uh, go through uh, some of the other uh, features. So again, this is my Remind website. This is the Add People page for Practice with Remind, which is the name of this class. So I'm, for the moment, I'm done adding people. When I click on Close, okay, um, we go back uh, to the page uh, for this class. So at the top, you'll see four different tabs. Let me go through, with, through them. So this is like a log of all the messages. And right away, you can see that lots of people, the, the, the primary message says, uh, you know, this person joined the class. So that basically only happens once. Uh, now, as you go through, you see some are in bold and that's an actual message. So not only did they join the class, they actually typed a message. Now, over here on the left, you actually see that in this class, there are eight new messages that have not been responded to, okay? So what I can do is I can click on that one message from that one person. I'm just gonna say, say back, hello, and welcome. So, and, and you can do this with your students. And then send a message and uh, wherever uh, Jean is located, she's actually gonna get a new message uh, back on her phone. Um, so again, you can go down and look at the list of messages, click on a message and respond. Okay, and so uh, this is where you keep track of the messages for this class. Uh, and uh, it may be helpful for those of you who didn't go through this process uh, to just spend a minute to talk about what you saw. Uh, but basically, you get a text message that says, you know, your teacher, you know, this is a message from Remind uh, from some unknown phone number. They're not going to know. They're not going to recognize the phone number, okay? Uh, but it, your teacher is like asking you to join the class. And then, you know, at, when you want to join the class, basically you say yes. And then it asks you, well, what's your full name? And so the student writes the name. Uh, and then it also asks them to uh, decide if they're a, 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 a student or a parent, okay? And uh, for adult students, this is sometimes confusing because they're both, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, in other situations, in, in K-12, um, you know, it does matter a little bit because they differentiate between K-12 students and their parents. Uh, and, and when we get into the settings, there is a setting which prevents, uh, if you want, uh, like students from, you know, or people from communicating with anybody outside of their role. And so uh, if it's a person uh, is the parent, uh, you can block them from speaking or sending a text message directly to a student and vice versa. Now, it may be true that um, some of you who already have uh, Remind accounts in the past and which you signed up for as teachers, uh, when you come in, uh, to this new classroom, or if you signed up just now, Remind I automatically identifies you uh, as a teacher. So in any case, this is the, uh, the sending the message page. Over here under files, pretty much this is what it says, all of the files that you shared to your class will appear here. So if you 
want to send out like a Word document, uh, you know, it would say send a file and, and then you could go through that process. We can uh, try that later. Okay, uh, people, that was the page we were already at. Uh, under this view, you see a list of all the people who have joined the class, okay? If you want to add more, then on the upper right, you select add people. And then uh, the settings page, and we'll uh, get into that uh, next, but that's where you would change the settings. But let's go back to the messages page and look at some of our options. So the message, the, the send a message uh, text box is at the bottom right, and the default is message everyone in the class. So message everyone in practice uh, with Remind. So, you, you know, basically you just uh, click. Uh, the very first message just says, welcome to practice with Remind, welcome to the class. Uh, I'm looking forward to using Remind uh, to share updates, notes, and more. Thanks for joining. So the key thing here is on the right, it says minus six. And so I think that means uh, there's too many uh, characters. So let's see what happens if we delete some characters. Okay, so at this point, if I click send, everybody who's joined uh, the class should now get that message. So let's see what happened. Okay, so I got a message that said message was sent and right away it goes back to the message screen and it tells me that this was the message that I sent and I sent it to everyone. So that means that all of you right now should be receiving another text message. Now, uh, notice that um, you may also, you know, how, who does that message come from? It still comes from that number that you don't know. So at this point, you may want to suggest to your students that they save this number in their own phone books as a message from their favorite teacher. See, so that way, uh, you know, they know that that's the that message that's coming in, that text message is actually coming from you and not from some strange uh, number. So they can say, you know, text messages from Mr. Buckeen. Okay. All right. So that's one thing to do with sending messages to everyone. Uh, you, you will notice uh, at the bottom that there are a few other things that you can do. Here's a photo. I just say, please write a, a sentence about this photo. So, you know, and of course that's an ESL type uh, instruction. No, you know, you, you're probably all teaching uh, different things. But see, right away, there's the attachments add to your message, okay? And so let's say upload a photo or video. And so, you know, you do want to find uh, your, the particular item that you wanted. So here's some photos. I'm going to, I select a photo and it takes a few seconds for it to load uh, into the, uh, into the message. Okay. And then um, I could send that. But instead of just sending it out randomly, here's a cool little feature uh, which could be useful for some of you, the translate feature. And they give you this little menu. See? So for example, if you wanted to uh, translate into another uh, language, it automatically uh, does it for you. Tinoosh, uh, can you verify if their uh, translation is decent? Yes, it is. Okay, let's do a Russian version. Uh, Russian. Okay, so Polina, 
How's, how's the automatic translation? It looks okay, see? Isn't that great? Uh, and again, you know, in an ESL class, uh, you know, obviously our goal is to um, do more, you know, native, you know, English language, but there could certainly be some uh, times when, you know, you may want to make use of this feature. You know, we're, we're again, back in our division, we're trying to get students uh, to activate their uh, school district emails and it is a convoluted process. And so it may be very convenient to be able to uh, do something like this. And anyway, uh, to get back to English, I'll go back to English. So here's a picture. Please write an offer. I don't remember. Please write a sentence. Oh, you know what? I bet you that was a reverse translation. In Portuguese or something, it must have had a different word. So translating back from Portuguese to English, please write a sentence about this photo. Okay. So that's one option. Uh, you guys can, I'm going to send everybody in the class a picture now of one of the schools I work at, East Valley Skills Center. Let's see how that's working. And there you go. And then again, you see the picture uh, and the, uh, of what uh, was sent out as a, a text message. Okay, uh, notice, so this is the message that I sent. If you click on that little arrow to the right, this is a little bit of a digression. Um, it gives you some uh, statistics. So 93%, well, let's say 100% of the people in this class got the message and 93% actually looked at it. So that can be very helpful to know, like, are they paying attention to what I'm sending them? Because at least, you, you know, here I know that 42 of you out of 45 actually opened to the message and saw it. That's pretty cool. So you can know, well, did, did, they, did they never see it or did they see it and simply ignore it? Okay, let's look at some of these other ones. Uh, can I translate into English a message a student sends to me in their native language? I don't know. I don't know if that's possible uh, within um, Remind, but you could certainly copy and paste. Okay. Um, does a student need to download the app to receive and send messages? No. Uh, they're just, for them, they're just text messages. Uh, can I, okay, so some names were automatically added that are not part of my class. They are from the local high school. Okay, so I guess your district has an account, and so some people were added to uh, your class. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, let's just get out of the questions for a second. So. Uh, if I go to people, okay, and, and there's a bunch of people, right? So let's say if I click on OTAN Techie, I get this little menu. Can everybody see that? And so um, on the right side, this is that person, okay? So there's more actions. And if I click on more actions, I have one. Uh, remove from class, which would boot OTAN Techie out of this class. Uh, block user, I'm not actually sure, uh, you know, the, the ramifications of that, but uh, it, I don't know if it just blocks users from me or from Remind totally. That would be a good question for uh, Remind. Uh, and then, boy, report to remind, gee, I'm tempted to do that. That OTAN Techie is probably some spam account. That's what, if you ask me. But anyway, that's, that's what you could do. Okay, let's get back to the Q&A real quickly. Uh, can students send images and videos uh, to the group? Um, I don't, I think so, but I'm not gonna promise you that they can. 
Uh, of course, you know, you would, before doing something like that, you'd want to remind everybody that everything that they do can be viewed by you. And so, uh, you know, they should be aware of that. Um, so, yeah, they don't, they don't want to be using this for, you know, private liaisons. Okay, uh, Jesse, you say that window isn't what I have, nothing on the right. Okay, I can text everybody but can't access that column. Let me go back to the messages. Okay, so um, at the very bottom in your message bar where it says message everyone in practice with remind, to the right, uh, Jesse, do you see the camera and the paper clip? If you click on the paper clip, then you get that message bar. Uh, you get this window where you can add other things. If you just start typing, let's see. Well, it doesn't even let me just start typing, so it pops up. But um, this may be a good opportunity before we go back to the question and answer. Uh, so we chose to add, upload a photo or video you can also at this time just upload a file. So it, it opens up your, explore, you know, your file explorer and you can select the file. Notice that it, it links to Google Drive. So if you click on Google Drive, uh, and I most likely the very first time that you do this, it's gonna ask you for permission to link to your Google Drive and you probably have to sign in to your Google Drive with your password. But Right here, you have a list of your most recent files. And so you can, you can attach that, whatever that file is automatically through this attachment system. So if I want people, if I want my students to read my weekly update, I can just click on it and it will appear uh, in the message. Now notice it is also a link or it appears as a link. And so um, I would imagine that you'd have to make sure before you do that, that you set the permissions on your Google Drive so that people can view it, okay? Uh, you can get rid of it by clicking on the X, okay? But if you go back to that menu, you may use some of these other third-party services, okay? Uh, the first time you see it's got the little plus symbol, which means uh, you probably have to give it permission. But uh, some of you, uh, you know, if you're using Google Forms uh, for quizzes uh, or for assessments, um, you know, you could do that through Google Drive. Some of you may be familiar with SurveyMonkey. So if, you, if you're using SurveyMonkey, it very conveniently looks for your most recent surveys and you could attach those. So that, that's pretty convenient. So, so those are the, uh, the attachments. Uh, now, the other thing is notice here your character count. So uh, in your messages to the whole class, you are limited to 140 uh, characters and it counts it down. As, as you start typing, the characters count down. There are some workarounds uh, if you want to uh, send a message with a greater number of characters. So uh, one of those is, you know, you write your message as a document uh, and then you attach the document, okay? But another nice little workaround um, is you can uh, send, you can divide your class into groups. So to do that, and, and then the, they don't have that same message uh, limit, character limit. So uh, the uh, pencil icon at near the top allows you to set up your message uh, in general. So notice it's this, if you write a message this way, it's not limited to the practice with Remind course. I could actually send the same message to 
multiple courses, see? And then they have this other uh, section called group conversations, okay? So I made a, a group of just me and myself in the past to practice it, so it remembers it. Uh, so that way, if you have like a, a you know a team of people uh, working on a project, you know, and you create a group just for that team, then uh, it, it's easy to come back to that team. But you can also select create new, and it says start the dialogue with up to nine other people. So you could go through the list and pick any, you know, pick any nine, okay, and then create a new group. Okay, so there's the new group, and then you continue to write a message to that group. And then notice now the character limit is significantly higher. You, you can, you know, your message can be much, much longer, 1,500 characters. So that could be a workaround if you find that your, uh, you know, 140 characters uh, doesn't, you know, isn't sufficient. Uh, let's go back to the um, Q&A and see if I got everything. Do I need to invite them? again to join remind could it be that they deleted the app if they got it i'm not exactly sure um what the setup is for that the students um, um were they all started using remind and like a month into it everybody stopped responding or only one or two respond still oh well i do not know um what the reason for that would be um you know maybe they're no longer interested in participating and there's nobody to enforce that you know what can i say uh or maybe they change their phone numbers but maybe you know take a look at the um remember we said over here oops uh the this right arrow let's say you have a message then to the right you can see uh, how many people read the message compared to how it was delivered. So that, that could help. Um, but I don't, I don't know that, you know, if they're using the app, then I think it would still go to their, just their text messaging. Uh, Bev asked uh, how many people are allowed in a group. Uh, I think it was nine. Okay, um, is there a way to keep students from seeing each other or to keep their names confidential? Sign up with a different name, I, I, that I don't know. Okay, does attaching a file or photo use remind message space? It does not appear to uh, affect the number of characters. How can you add content without using space in the message? Okay, so again, uh, just try one. Okay, so here's my message. I'm going to say test message. And I'm down to 128 characters. If I upload a file, here's a Word document. I'll open it. And it may take time for documents to, oops, to load. But it, it, did, it did look like it um, dropped my characters down to 105 uh, but I that doesn't seem to be me to be significant um, but again if you have any concerns about that I would say uh, you know divide your classes uh, up into groups okay let's get back to the Q&A and uh, how do I send a picture from my phone to my remind file the file is linked to my computer, not my phone number. Um, I would, you know, maybe just send the phone to your email. 
and then you know wherever your email is you link you know you you open your email on your computer and uh you know download or upload them to your computer so you can uh attach the the picture that would probably be uh one workaround or you you know upload the picture to your google drive or some other cloud service and and send it from there let's look at a few more of the settings so right here notice the class name was practice with remind but you can go right in and change it if you want to you know more practice with remind but this next section is where you change the class code so if, if in your uh class it's got one of those you know, three digits and then a letter and then four or more digits uh you just click in the the box and change it but notice they they have one of these uh, artificial intelligence type things that says oops this one is unavailable okay so they give you some suggestions or you just keep typing uh until uh, it makes sense uh and then notice let's say i'll do easy code you know 10. um so when i save it you get a little uh pop-up are you sure uh, current participants won't be affected because you're already in but new participants must use this code uh, to join your class so you can accept uh, or not okay then uh, there's the name of the school that this one is associated with uh, and they give you a little reminder here uh, this school doesn't have a remind plan which I I'm sure costs money uh, and your school may or may not wish to uh, spend money but uh, you can still notice it tells me how many more classes I have you can create five more classes uh, with your free account so if you so I already have one two three four or five so it looks like they give you up to ten classes um, as we go down though I'm just going to skip right by this next part because at the very bottom it says archiving reuse class code so you can archive this class and create a new class with the same class code so if you really like that easy code for you you could keep it uh, you can also just remove the class and it, it no longer appears in your class list so i have uh over here on the left side so remember i have five more classes if i go to this other practice class called technology workshop okay and i go to settings see and i go down and i say archive the class are you sure i'm going to remove it because i don't need it now i'll go back to my practice with remind class go back to settings and if the magic worked see now i have six more classes that i can create by archiving a class uh, that i didn't really need okay some other settings uh, class visibility this class will appear in class search and on your profile so on is fine uh, require approval to join uh, notice that does say anyone added by your school will be approved automatically that may have related to the other uh, issue of the the person who said that they had students in their class that they don't know where they uh, came from okay uh, participant messaging okay so this is where you can choose how the participants see and message others in the class so the default is role based meaning students can only message students parents can only message parents so you know in my class you know typically we don't have that type of combination so i just say all participants in the class can message each other uh, for the one uh, participant who asked about not seeing the other people you may want to select off and that way they can only message the class owners and can't see 
others in the class. So that may be the solution there. And then uh, by default, I will only message people 13 or older, uh, presuming that most of us are working in an adult school. I, I think that's safe to, to keep. Uh, class owners can see and send messages to class participants. Once somebody becomes a class owner, they cannot be removed. So be careful who you welcome to your little club. Okay, let's, let me drop back in now uh, to the, the Q&A and, and the chat. Okay, so uh, let's see. So when a, the question is, so when a student graduates and leaves my class, can I still keep them in a list for the communication to continue? Or should I place them in a group so they do not get assignments, just info or greetings? Um, I'm not actually sure. Perhaps you can, if you have extra classes, you, you could create a class called, uh, you know, former students. And then you put all of the, uh, those students uh, into that group. Uh, and then if you, re if you remember, uh, when we were looking at an individual student name, click on the student name, you get this other little menu on the side. Um, well, let's see, let's see, view profile. Uh, there, was, there was a way to um, oh, add to another class, see? So you can switch them to the, the new class that you've made uh, on your own. Okay, so um, that's what's messaging. The, the last thing that um, we should cover is uh, this create a class. Okay, so again, you know, when you joined, you created your first class, okay? So now we're gonna, you know, you need to create a new class. Basically, you click on create a class, and then you choose class name, okay? Uh, there, oh, that, that's a very difficult class code. So I'm gonna just say tech for you now. Okay, I like that. Okay, and then notice it, it didn't let you type too many. The, the class code can't be too long. Uh, well, this is the this, this school, I'll change it over to North Valley Occupational Center. Okay, yes, and I create my, oh, I guess I, oh, you know, maybe when I switch classes, it erased the, the class name. So we'll put it back, Tech Talks, okay, and I'll create it. Okay, so there you go. Right now, I don't have any members in the class. You know how to add members. Click on people and click on add people. And then you have the four methods. Okay, adding from the spreadsheet. You can type a, a name. Okay, oops, sorry. That would be the phone number. And then, boom, add the people and they get a, a phone number. Uh, they get a text message, okay? When you're done with that, you can close it. Okay, and so you have the same thing. But now there's a new class here, Tech Talks. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, so we're almost at the end of uh, today's webinar. The only other thing that I would say uh, if you click under uh, your name, the Help Center is very helpful. So they've got a lot of, you know, they have an FAQ. Uh, you can chat with a computer. Uh, they have other resources. Uh, and so uh, if you will finish the class for this school year, do I need to keep the class with the same students? Um, I think that we saw that you can archive uh, and that way it just, you know, it doesn't, you don't, you're not worried about it. I entered in about 40 names. Let's say 10 do not respond. I will need to add or invite them again. 
There is no place to access the students I invited but did not accept. Well, let's see, let's go back to that. Okay, so you added people. I think that, um, for example, if you, you know, you would just wanna keep a record of the ones that you requested and, and you know, just keep a spreadsheet and then you can compare the spreadsheet with uh, who's actually in the class. But I, I do not know uh, if there's a way to see uh, that from within Remind. Okay, so um, can you remind us, Cute, how it will work when we send the class code to students uh, by way of email? Um, I think, okay, so if you send it by way of email, they probably would click on a link in a browser and then uh, it would ask them to uh, join the class. But I'm not actually sure because I've always done it uh, with phone numbers. Okay, let's see if there's anything in the chat box that needs to be reviewed. Uh, yeah, so it, yeah, it doesn't seem to be a way uh, to see who are potentially, I would say, you know, op, work off of your own spreadsheet uh, or take screenshots. Located, remind messages can't be edited or deleted once they've been sent. This is similar to other text, emails, and messages you send. Uh, although participants can delete text from their phones, these messages will still appear in the remind message history. That's, that's uh, great advice. Uh, and just like when you are uh, working on your phone with you know, a couple of people who you're texting, using your text messaging, and then you've got somebody else on Messenger, and then maybe you have somebody on WhatsApp. You know, it's uh, pretty much a good idea nowadays to double check before you click send that you're sending that message to the correct people. Uh, you can avoid a lot of embarrassment that way. Uh, okay. Okay, let's see. So Paulina says, when I invite people, I usually type in the name and the phone number that is on the roster I have access to through this school. Okay, so again, yes, yeah, that's sort of your, you know, keeping track in your own fashion. 